This is a 3D printer. You might have seen one before, and although they are simple to use, they are quite complex machines and it helps to know what exactly people are talking about. So in this video, we're going to go over the terminology for the most important parts on a 3D printer. Keep in mind that in this video, I'm only talking about FDM or FFF 3D printers, which stands for Fused Deposition Modeling or the non-copyrighted version Fused Filament Fabrication. As the name implies, these machines use filament to build 3D objects, either on a spool or in a loose coil. The filament is being fed by an extruder, which consists of a stepper motor, a drive gear or hopped gear, and an idler, which pushes the filament into a hopped gear, consisting of the idler lever, an idler bearing, and typically an adjustable spring. If the drive gear is mounted directly on the motor shaft without gearing, it is typically called a direct drive extruder. If it has gearing to increase torque, well, it's called a geared extruder. The term direct extruder can also refer to the extruder sitting directly on top of the hot end instead of being connected with a Bowden tube in a Bowden setup. Both of these setups have their pros and cons. This is a hot end. Its job is to melt your plastic filament at exactly the right temperature in exactly the right places. It consists of a nozzle, a heater block, a heat break, and a heat sink. The heat break's job is to mechanically support the heater block and nozzle while allowing as little heat as possible to creep up into the heat sink area. The heater block and nozzle are heated by a heater cartridge and the temperature is being read back by a temperature sensor, typically a thermistor, or in a more modern form factor as a thermistor cartridge. There are also some very different temperature sensor types available. The term all metal hardened refers to the fact that there are no plastic parts touching the heated zone, such as a PTFE tube that is used as a bushing to make the filament run more smoothly. In a hybrid or Teflon lined hardened, this tube would extend all the way into the heater block, limiting its maximum temperature. In a Cartesian machine where the printer's movement axes are aligned with the XYZ coordinate system, the hardened sits on a carriage. On a Delta or Rostock style 3D printer, all three of its movement axes are aligned with the Z axis and the part where the hardened mounts to is called an effector. In either case, it is also called the tool head, which is a term carried over from CNC machining. Almost all 3D printers are driven by stepper motors that either transfer their power through belts or through a lead screw. Often, lead screws or threaded rods are used for Z-axes on Cartesian machines since they give better resolution and will more easily hold a position even when the motors are powered off, whereas the faster X and Y axes are typically driven by timing belts. What you see on the outside is just a rubber coating, but on the inside, they are reinforced by Kevlar, glass fiber, or steel strands. The most common size is GT2 2M 6mm. This specifies the tooth profile, the tooth pitch, and the width of the belt. This other belt is also a GT2 belt, but it's a GT2 3M 15mm type. Each axis runs on a linear bearing. Today, they are mostly linear ball bearings, but polymer or brass bushings are also used. Fancier designs use linear rails, which are also a type of linear ball bearing. The entire printer is controlled by a mainboard or controller board. The mainboard is home to a microcontroller, the MCU, stepper drivers, MOSFETs for switching heaters and fans on and off, as well as various inputs and outputs, for example for connecting thermistors, expansion modules, or for connecting the 3D printer to a computer through USB with a virtual serial port. Another way of controlling a 3D printer is through an LCD controller. These house an LCD screen, an input knob, and an SD card reader. A 3D printer only processes G-code files containing thousands of individual lines of move instructions. The software that generates these from 3D STL files is called a slicer. You can then either transfer the G-code file onto an SD card or stream it to the 3D printer using a host software. Parts are rarely 3D printed solid. Instead, they're made from a solid shell and sparse infill. How dense the infill honeycomb is printed is determined by the infill ratio set in the slicer. The shell is usually split up into perimeters, which is the thickness of the solid part around the infill on each layer, and top and bottom solid layers, which determines, well, how many solid layers are added on the top and the bottom of a part. FDM 3D printers are limited in their ability to print unsupported overhangs, but they can also print bridges, which are unsupported vertical structures that are supported just on each end. For some prints, you might need to use support material. This can either be breakaway support using single extrusion with just one material, or you can run it with a dual extrusion setup printing the support material with a different filament that is easier to snap away or is even water soluble. With 3D printers becoming more and more of an ecosystem between the hardware and the software instead of just the machine by itself, prints often come out very impressively without any tweaking. However, some of the more common defects are the following. Warping often seen with ABS when the entire part tries to pull itself off the bed. 
This is not to be confused with curling, which is a local issue that happens on the underside of very steep overhangs. If you see a very regular pattern along the z-axis of a print, that is z-wobble. If it's along the x or y-axis of a print, it's ringing. You may also see over or under extrusion, where the extruder lays down too much or too little material. This is best visible on the very top layer of a print. Alright, so I think that should be enough to at least make you sound knowledgeable on Facebook or even better on the community forums at discuss.toms3d.org. As always, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, get subscribed. And if you want me to keep making them and want to support that, head over to Patreon, where for the monthly pledge you'll get access to exclusive hangouts and more. Thanks for watching.